Live from Cedar Park, it's Sunday morning.
want to welcome you to this service of worship of Cedar Park First United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Peter, and Pastor Suzette will be with us uh, later in the service uh, for the children's moment. I hope you'll have your children ready to Zoom with Pastor Suzette. Today is the fifth Sunday, the penultimate uh, Sunday in this little sliver of ordinary time before we head into the season of Lent. Uh, the color is green. We are growing together on the vine that is Christ, and I'm so glad that you're here with us today. Just a few things we want to make you aware of. Uh, Bob Boker is always faithful to be up here on Tuesday mornings at 10 a.m. to receive offerings that you may have for Hill Country Community Ministries. As you know, with the pandemic, the need, uh, the hunger issues in this country are immense, and Hill Country is seeing many people coming for assistance and they need your support to make that uh, feeding ministry possible. If you could just get extra cans of food, there's a list in the worship bulletin, the final page of the, today's worship bulletin, where you'll see a list of items that they're looking for, and you can either bring them up here and put them in the bin that's on the porch, the front porch, or you can bring them Tuesdays at 10, and Bob Boker will receive your offerings. That's always appreciated. Now, a week from Wednesday, the season of Lent begins. Uh, there will be an Ash Wednesday service, a virtual Ash Wednesday service on the 17th. But we're also going to be beginning uh, uh, to read a book of 40 Days of Meditations on the Sermon on the Mount, uh, written by Amy Jill Levine, Toward the Kingdom of Heaven. You can get this book from us for $15. You can download it to your Kindle. Uh, we'll be reading each day a, a, a page or two of meditations in this book. And then on Thursdays, beginning February 25th at 10 a.m., we're going to have a Zoom conversation about uh, the book, and you're encouraged to join us for that. If you're interested, please email me, peter at cpfumc.org, and we'll get you a, a, a copy of the book and a schedule of the readings. Uh, we're so glad you're here today. Let us now together worship God.
Amen. I invite you to join me now for the greeting. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all God's benefits. The Lord redeems our lives from the pit and crowns us with steadfast love and mercy. Join me now in singing, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. We're going to sing all seven verses, Jody. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing My great Redeemer's praise The glories of my God and King The triumphs of His grace My gracious Master and my God Assist me to to spread through all the earth abroad the honors of thy name. Jesus, the name that charms our fears, that bids our sorrows cease, tis music in the sinner's ears, tis life and health and peace. He breaks the power of Cancel sin, he sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean, his blood avail for me. He speaks and listening to his voice, new life the dead receive. The mournful broken hearts rejoice, the humble poor be. Hear him, ye deaf, his praise, ye dumb, your loosened tongues implore. Ye blind, behold, your Savior come, and leap ye lame for joy. In Christ your head you then shall know, shall feel your sins forgiven. Anticipate your heaven below, and own that love is heaven. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you give strength to the powerless and power to the faint. You raise up the sick and cast out demons. Make us agents of healing and wholeness that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to ask the children to come forward now as we sing. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Good morning, my friends. How are you today? Good. How's Crystal today? Um, she's like good. She's ready to answer some questions. Excellent. I love it. So, um, do you know that God loves you? Yes. Yes. And God loves you and you and you and you and your parents and like everyone, including me and Pastor Peter and everybody who's helping the technology and everybody who's watching on this and everybody who's never, ever, ever seen. Basically everybody in the universe. <laughs> there you go. Because God is love. That's in first John it says God is love, right? So love in this world, right? So what do you think about when you think of love? Hearts. Mm -hmm. What do you feel? 
people say? What do you, when you think of, oh, that's love? What are some examples? Maybe, um, like something, maybe, I, I lost my train of thought. That's okay. So oftentimes we think of love is that we feel secure or when you get a hug from somebody maybe, or when someone is kind to you, right? Those are ways of love moving in the world of God, moving in the world through us. But I also want to talk about the fact that love isn't always just about feeling warm and fuzzy. That love is power. It is the most powerful force in the universe because it, who, who is love? Jesus or God. That's right. And God chooses to give that power away to you and me. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, look and think about that. God gives you power. Now, that power, again, is not just to be nice to other people, but it's also to choose not to be something, right? There are times when we get angry or annoyed. Maybe our parents tell us we have to stop doing what we want to do and go do chores. Or maybe our brother or sister is just really annoying. Sometimes, not you two. I know not you two, but other brothers and sisters can be really annoying sometimes, right? And you feel this inside of you, or maybe you're scared or anxious, right? All of those icky feelings. Love, what do we do with that? What do we do when we feel all that ickiness inside? How do we deal with it? Um, we go to God. So that we can access our superpower, right? God gives us the power through how? How do we go to God? By praying. Praying or scripture or sometimes talking to someone else who knows about God, like maybe a parent or a pastor or a teacher or someone who knows about God. And we don't know how to do with those tough feelings if we go to God and say, ah, Right? We don't even have to have the right words. We can just go, ah! And God will understand that we are struggling. And God will give us the power not to be mean. That's pretty amazing. Right? That's pretty amazing. You get yeah. the power to do that. Do you know who else did prayer? What's the answer always in, what's always the Jesus. answer? Jesus. Josie, Leland. Yes, Jesus. Jesus, right? So Pastor Peter's gonna preach today and right after his section that he preaches, it tells us that Jesus went away to pray. Jesus does all these amazing things and then Jesus goes away to pray. Jesus practiced prayer all the time, all throughout scriptures. They're like, where's Jesus? And they go looking for him and he's praying. Isn't that amazing? He is fully human and fully divine, son of God. And still, even Jesus has to practice praying to access that power. And you and I get to do the same thing. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So it's not just at prayer, not just at meal times, it's anytime. Yes, Leland. I can't hear you. Excellent question. So how does praying help? That is a perfect question. So part of what we do when we pray is to remind ourselves that God is bigger than whatever we're facing. So that can help us calm down our feelings. Sometimes with prayer, we say, I don't know what to do here, you take this. And we hand over our fear, our anger, our frustration. And we say, come in instead. And we replace the icky feelings with better feelings. 
that help us to be in control. And sometimes it takes more than one prayer, right? You didn't learn to do soccer skills or riding a bike or reading a book by picking it up once, right? Yeah. You have to keep practicing. So we have to keep, sometimes something is just really churning up in us and we have to keep going back to God and go, ah, you take this, right? You don't have to have fancy words. You just need to take yourself to God and say, I need help. And God will help you refocus so that you can grab onto that power of love and choose to be kinder and more gentle in the world. Um, I have a little question. Where are you, Pastor Suzette? I am in the office. Oh. The other building. So I'm at my desk right now. No, oh, that's so. Yeah, it's different. It's different. Okay. So we're going to practice right now. Praying to God. Repeat after me. Dear God. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For loving us. For loving us. For loving us. And giving us. And giving us. And giving us. The power. The power. The power. To love others too. To love, love others, others too. too. Help us. Help us. Help us. To practice. To practice. To practice. Praying to you. Praying, praying to you. Me. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name, In we, Jesus pray. name we pray. Amen. 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 Like she's over here just staying awake while we're praying. <laughs> That's right. Isn't that amazing? Jesus is always on the move. Always, always on the move. You can always reach out, even if you don't have the right words. Just say. Ah, and Jesus will be there. All right, I'll see you next week. Bye. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us join our hearts in the prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. And our first scripture lesson comes to us from Isaiah 40, verses 21 through 31. Don't you know? Haven't you heard? Wasn't it announced to you from the beginning? Haven't you understood since the earth was founded? God inhabits the earth's horizon. Its inhabitants are like locusts, stretches out the skies like a curtain, spreads it out like a tent for dwelling. God makes dignitaries useless and the earth judges into nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely is their shoot rooted in the earth when God breathes on them and they dry up. The windstorm carries them off like straw. So to whom will you compare me? And who is my equal, says the Holy One. Look up to the sky and consider who created thee. The one who brings out their attendants one by one, summing each of them by name. Because God's great strength and mighty power, not one is missing. Why do you say, Jacob, and declare, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my God ignores my predicament? Do you not know, haven't you heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator in the ends of the earth, he doesn't grow weak or weary. God's understanding is beyond human reach, giving power to the tired and reviving the exhausted. Youth will become tired and weary. Young men will certainly stumble, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength and they will fly up on the wings of eagles. They will run and not be tired. They will walk and not be weary. This is the word of the Lord.
Thanks be, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Let's sing together now. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. God's so good to me. God cares for me. God cares for me. God cares for me. God's so good to me. God loves me so. God loves me so. God loves me so. God's so good to me. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. God's so good to me. Today's gospel lesson comes to us from the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark. Hear this word. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. Jesus came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to Jesus all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. One question Jesus asked his disciples never ceases to be asked. Who do you say I am? Just who is Jesus after all? The answers, there are many. If only because no single answer says it all. Jesus is a prophet. Jesus is a teacher. Jesus is Savior. Jesus is truly God and truly human. There are so many ways to address the question, who is Jesus? Today's Gospel lesson supplies still another answer. The Jesus who raised up Peter's mother-in-law to health and cured many who were sick and demon-possessed. This Jesus is a healer. This episode in Mark's Gospel, it is rich, not simply for what it did for several victims of brokenness, but more importantly, what it suggests about Jesus and about you and me. But first, let's, let's ask ourselves, what and whom did Jesus heal? The Gospel of Mark is literally crowded with the stories. Jesus heals people who are possessed. A man convulsed, a boy foaming and grinding his teeth, a little girl. There is this story of Simon Peter's mother-in-law who has a fever and Jesus heals her. There's a leper begging to be cleansed, a man with a withered hand, the dead small daughter of a synagogue leader, a woman hemorrhaging for 12 years, a blind man imploring Jesus to touch him, a deaf man with a speech impediment. In fact, in our text, Jesus healed all who were sick or possessed with demons. The other Gospels are hardly different. Matthew tells us that Jesus went throughout Galilee, curing every disease and every sickness among the people, demoniacs, epileptics, paralytics. Luke's Gospel not only tells of leprosy and paralysis, a withered hand, a possession, a dead only son, blindness. There is also that striking scene in Luke where John the Baptist sends two disciples to ask, 
Are you the one who is to come or are we to wait for another? And Jesus' answer is not a simple yes. He says, go and tell John what you've seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And what about the Gospel of John? Well, there, a Samaritan woman is healed of her marital adventures. She's inspired to preach the Messiah to her townspeople. There's a man, 38 years ill, and Lazarus, four days dead. There's a woman caught in adultery and a man blind from birth. So, Jesus healed. Healed broken bodies. Healed savage spirits. Healed mangled minds. And that's impressive. But why? Why did Jesus heal? On the face of it, often out of compassion, raising to life the only son of a widowed mother? Or He did it to signal that God's reign, God's rule has come to earth in Jesus. He announces at the beginning of His ministry, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God has drawn near. But there's really something even more profound. Think about it. The very word heal, as with the word health, it has to do with wholeness. Why did Jesus heal? Jesus healed to put the ill the wounded, the living dead, the sinner on the way to wholeness, on the way to genuine humanness. In the Gospels, at times the beginning was small, cooling the fever of Peter's mother-in-law, or eating with Zacchaeus, the hated tax collector. At times it was more significant, restoring an ostracized leper to family, to community, to friends at worship, and sometimes it was spectacular, driving devils out of a mockery of humanity, howling among the tombs and on the mountains. But those were the immediate problems, the obvious ailments, the basic reason why Jesus healed was why the Son of God took our flesh, to destroy the enmity, the hostility, the brokenness present in the world. Paralysis and blindness, adultery, dual possession, these could be obstacles to a person's awareness of God's presence. These could keep a person from responding to God and responding to Jesus. In a word, the ultimate healing, the wholeness Jesus had in mind was that grand church word, reconciliation. Jesus came to restore harmony, to create wholeness, unity, communion with God within each person and between persons, between sisters and brothers. And in that way to build up a kingdom, a commonwealth of peace and justice and love to make the body of Christ whole. So, that's all fancy stuff, Pastor, but what does that have to do with you and me? Healing, did it stop with Jesus' death, with His return to God? No, healing is an ever-present must. And why is that? Because the church is human. It's composed of sinners. Because this organization and each of us baptized into it, we're always in the need of reform. Because the church on earth is not the final kingdom. It's not the perfection of Christ's redeeming crucifixion. As long as selfishness and sin, as long as hunger and hate, corruption and conflict, division and distance, distress and despair, disease and death, as long as these roam our world and infect the world and even our own Christian body, Christianity is not whole. So what does that have to do with you and me? Well, we happen to be part of the problem and part of the solution. Part of the sickness and part of the remedy. We are wounded healers. Christ has called us, even though we are weak and fallible, to be part of His healing ministry, to be part of His reconciling ministry. 
We are called to image Christ the healer by confronting physical or or psychological or spiritual sickness. Surgeons cut out malignant growths. Therapists reveal and treat hidden psychoses. But believers can grow near to others and pray for them. And in the power of the Holy Spirit, others who are bent over with their problems and their illnesses, they can walk away tall and standing high. It's not that suffering is incompatible with Christianity. Suffering cannot be an end to itself. In our imperfect world, in our imperfect church, all healing is a way to wholeness. And the more whole we are, the richer the possibilities of oneness with Christ. I recall one healer of our time, a woman named Thea Bowman, the first African-American woman to receive a doctorate in theology from Boston College, a distinguished teacher for 16 years, starting out on the elementary level and then moving on to the secondary and then the university level, diagnosed at 47 with cancer that had spread to lymph nodes and bones and dead six years later. But on a September day, not too many years ago, six months before her death, she spoke at a rally celebrating healing ministry. And she said, God gave me life and I want to live as fully as I can until I die. I want to live my best. I want to love my best. I want to do my best. I want to give my best. Beautiful words. I want to love my best. I know from personal experience you can be in first-rate, tip-top physical shape and still be far from whole, far from love, far from being one with God and with others. So who are Christians? Who are we really? We're healers. We are wounded healers. For all its mystery-laden doctrines, Christianity is not just some head trip. Few, if any of us, will be chastised by Jesus for failing to understand the precise relationship of Jesus' humanity to Jesus' divinity. Few, if any of us, will be barred by St. Peter at the pearly gates for not being able to define pre-millennial dispensationalism. We will be asked simply, how well did you love? And so two questions. Where do I need healing and wholeness? Is it some physical ailment that besets me? Is it my personal relationship with God? Is it the running battle that I have with my family or with other Christians that I can't stand? And second, where am I playing Christ the healer? Where am I bringing others to wholeness? You see, healing is my Christian vocation and yours. Outside us and within, there are ills past numbering, ills that keep human images of God from reaching toward wholeness. Where does the healing Christ call you to heal? I don't know. Only you know. Only you and the Christ within you, the Christ who calls you, who calls you even now. And let all God's people say, Amen. As a response to this word, let's affirm our faith now by reciting a statement of faith of the United Church of Canada. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. 
We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. We turn our hearts now to God in prayer. And uh, I hope that you have uh, printed out the worship bulletin because you'll find on that bulletin a list of prayer concerns. There are many people in our congregation who are hurting, who need your healing touch or to hear your voice. And I hope uh, that you've also uh, taken the time to find a candle that you can light in your space. And when I light my candle here in our space, we'll be able to share a sacred space together and we'll pray. And I invite you to share any prayer concerns. I hope you'll do that. Take the time to type out a prayer concern. Uh, Some person that you know of, some situation that needs healing from God. And just send that to us. And, And Suzette will be lifting those up a little later in the service. I encourage you to continue to send prayer concerns by typing a comment in the comment box. Let's go ahead and uh, light our candles together now, and then we'll sing our prayer song. We're going to sing now the first verse of There is a Balm in Gilead. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm Sometimes I feel discouraged and think my work's in vain. But then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. There is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bomb in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. We have a number of family and friends who need our prayers. We grieve the loss of our dear brother Duke Squibb, uh, uh, and we had uh, his memorial service yesterday. So, prayers for his family as they grieve his loss. We also lift up our dear sister Elaine Stolfus on the death of her son-in-law Ed, uh, who died recently, and we ask God to draw near to Elaine and her family. Uh, A number of people are actually suffering uh, that we need to be in prayer for. I know that uh, Par Key's uh, sister-in-law and uh, her husband uh, are suffering from COVID, and as well as Glenda Morrison's daughter Jody, and so We need to pray for these uh, uh, continued prayers for Dwayne and Marianne Mosier as Dwayne recovers from COVID. And we lift up Meg McClintock and all the residents at uh, the Sky facility uh, where there's been an outbreak of coronavirus there. We lift up uh, Sterling uh, Hartman's sister-in-law, Sister Linda, who's suffering from breast cancer, and a 16-year-old friend of the Bokers, Ty Kearns, who had spinal surgery on Thursday. One other prayer that we just need to be in prayer for because she's asked uh, for special prayers today. Uh, Martha Orr suffered a bad fall uh, this week and uh, really blackened her eyes and uh, bruised her head and hopefully no broken bones, but she's in a lot of pain. And we just need to uh, reach out our souls and just uh, touch her today for the Lord's healing so that she can experience relief from uh, all the pains that she is currently experiencing. Let's sing verse two of our song. There is a ball in a Gilead to make a wounded whole. There is a ball in Gilead to heal the sin sick 
Suzette, Pastor Suzette. Please join me in prayer. Eternal God, hallowed be your name. Early in the morning before we begin our work, we praise your glory. For those who are suffering in heart, in mind, in body, or in soul, we ask your steadfast love to attend these persons and we include ourselves in the need for your love. Specifically, we share prayers of joy and celebration for Duane testing negative for COVID, and we give thanks for that healing and thanks for a church family that has prayed without ceasing. And as we celebrate healings from COVID, we are reminded that COVID is in our schools. In one high school alone, there are 52 teachers and 200 students with COVID or quarantined. And last week, over half the youth were quarantined. So help us, God, to be patient as we journey through this pandemic. We ask prayers for Cheryl's parents who have fallen and are now facing choices forced by aging. Guide their hearts and their minds as they choose the path forward. And I ask prayers for my mother who has experienced unexplained exhaustion Help us to find solutions to restore fullness of life. Karen continues our prayers for healing for Ty Kearns from his back surgery and pain relief. Meg asks us to continue praying for Maxine and others at the residence of Sky who have COVID. And we have joys and celebrations. We are so happy to celebrate with Sarah her birthday and on Monday and Abby's birthday on Wednesday. In the midst of hurt and suffering, there is still joy and celebration and growth. For burdens that we cannot speak aloud or bring to the light of your love, help us now in our silence to lay down our personal sorrows and private struggles before the saving grace of your son, Jesus Christ. Renew our bodies as fresh as morning flowers. Open our inner eyes as the sun casts new light upon darkness. Deliver us all from captivity like the birds of the sky. Give us wings of freedom to begin a new journey. As a mighty stream running continuously, restore justice and freedom day by day. We thank you for the gift of this morning and for the new day to work with you. And as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's sing the third verse of There is a Balm in Gilead. There is a balm in the 
to share with you our mission moment today. Um, I have some wonderful news to share with you about the Child's Haven, um, in part due to your strong financial support and belief and prayers in it. We have wonderful news now. Enrollment is already growing for next year. The Kinderbridge class is part of a pilot program working with Texas A&M. We have started the first of four fundraisers. The first one right now is Hanging Gardens. Next month, they will be doing a Dr. Seuss readathon. Then they are having a garage sale, which will be followed by an online auction. And their goal is to raise $5,000 for the scholarships. Right now, we have three families on scholarship. The youth have started to work with Shannon, the ACH director to transform the area underneath the oak trees by the sanctuary into a growing classroom for the students and for us to enjoy. And lastly, I am super excited to be able to say this to you. The ACH was awarded a second PPP loan for $20,000, which will let us have a solid, solid financial start for our next year. And we could not have done it without this congregation giving so profoundly when the need was the greatest. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all of your prayers, all your financial support, all your can do. We'll figure this out and make it happen because every day, Every day, little hearts are learning about God's love. And when we do chapel time with them, we start out with reminding them that God loves them and they know that God is love in part because of your continued and ongoing support. So a day of celebration. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Suzette. And thank you all for your support of that very vital ministry, the ministry of a child's haven. Now, I hope you have your dancing shoes ready because we're about to dance. And uh, you can just imagine Sue Sidney pirouetting around here. Uh, just have that image in your mind as we sing together, Lord of the Dance. I danced in the morning when the world was begun And I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun And I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth At Bethlehem I had my birth Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced for the scribe and the Pharisee, but they would not dance, and they would not follow me. I danced for the fishermen, for James and John. They came to me, and the dance went on. Dance then, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. 
I danced on the Sabbath when I cured the lame. The holy people said it was a shame. They whipped and they stripped and they hung me high. And they left me there on a cross to die. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. And I'll lead you all wherever you may be. And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced on a Friday and the sky turned black. It's hard to dance with the devil on your back. They buried my body and they thought I'd gone. But I am the dance and I still go on. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. They cut me down and I leapt up high. I am the life that will never, never die. I'll live in you if you'll live in me. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you in the dance, said he. Go in peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. We turn to the side and sing our song of going forth. Shalom to you now. Shalom, my friends. May God's full mercy bless you my friends, in all your living and through your loving, Christ be your shalom, Christ be your